So this is what the finished hat would look like. Everything here was made from scratch. Um, the base of the hat is green. You've got the pink scarf and the lace on top. And then the hat pins, the 10-6 card and the ostrich feather, we've all pieced together. And I've made the hat pins and 10-6 card from scratch. I'm going to be using my Teddy Cookie as our model today since I don't have enough materials left over to make a full size version of the hat. But first of all you're going to want to measure the circumference of your head with a tape measure just like so all the way around. Once you have your measurements, you can work out the pattern for the brim, but personally I found it a lot easier to just use a plate that's a little bit bigger than the size of your head and trace that out onto a piece of cardboard. Once you cut that piece out, you'll have a circle just like this. If the plate you've used is only a little bit bigger than the size of your head, then add a few more centimetres. If it's the exact same size as your head, you want to add quite a couple more centimetres, maybe five or so. For the cylinder of the hat, you're going to want to use a thin piece of card that's flexible enough to bend into a circle. If your card has a seam in it like mine did, it will make the hat too square. So you want to cut along the seam and then glue it back together, but overlapping the seam so that it's a bit more flexible. I was too lazy to do it here, but it'll be easier just to use a more flexible piece of card. You're going to then cut at the bottom of the card about one centimeter in height and width so you have these tabs all along the bottom of this piece. Then bend all of the tabs outwards like this so that they stick out. You then want to glue the two tabs that meet along the seam and obviously the seam so that this is one cylindrical piece. As you can see, I'd already progressed a little bit here, but that's because I made a mistake. Once we've cut out the first circular piece that makes up the brim, you want to trace the circle that's going to make the cylinder, and you want to cut out that circle. That's where your head's going to go. It's just going to be a lot easier to cut that out now at this point in the process than later on like I did. You then want to trace the top of the hat so that we have a circular piece and cut that out like we did before. Glue the top of the hat down as well and then the base of your hat is complete. Now because I didn't have a lot of excess materials from the first time I made this hat, the fabrics are going to be inversed so the scarf around the hat is going to be green and the hat itself is going to be pink but the actual hat should be the other way around. So to measure how much fabric you're going to need for the hat, what I did was simply cover the hat itself in the piece of fabric. I think I had about a metre of green fabric when I made my hat. You're going to cover it like this and then cut it a few centimetres down from where it meets. You're going to want to have excess fabric so that you don't have too little and you have to patch on extra bit. You then want to cut out the pieces for each part of the hat. So you want a piece for the top of the hat, the cylinder along the side of the hat, and the brim. Uh, to measure each of these parts is pretty simple. For the brim and the top of the hat, simply trace it onto the fabric and then cut out the circle with a few centimeters of excess. And for the cylinder of the hat, you want to measure the height and the width and then cut out a long rectangle and the same height and width but give yourself a few extra centimeters as well. Then just glue on all your pieces, it's pretty simple. I used a hot glue gun to glue everything down. Um, it will be a little bit lumpy because the fabric is quite thin 
but because you're going to cover everything in lace anyways and no one's going to be that close to your hat honestly you don't notice anything so i recommend hot glue but you could also use gorilla glue um, i wouldn't use fabric glue though This pink fabric is quite delicate so the edges kept fraying. The green fabric I used for my actual hat didn't have this much of a problem but if your fabric is similar and it frays a lot of the edges just take the hot glue gun and go around all the raw edges of the fabric so that it doesn't fray. So as you can see, I freestyled with the brim of the hat and I didn't cut it the same way I did originally. The original hat is a lot cleaner, even though you don't see all of the messy edges, but it just looks a lot neater than the version I tried. So I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. To cut the brim piece, you're going to want to measure the base of your hat, so the larger circle. And then flip the hat around so the top of the hat is down on the fabric. And then trace that in the center of your larger circle and then cut out that inner smaller circle. I also glued all the pieces onto the hat, so the pins are glued on, the 10-6 card is glued on, the ostrich feather, peacock feather, I can't remember, is glued on and um, it's just going to make everything more secure. You don't want things falling out at a party or a convention or anything. For the hat pins, on the original hat I just took chopsticks and painted them gold. And for the beads on top of the hat, I just took pieces of paper and molded them into the shape that was on his hat and then painted them gold as well. But for a more realistic effect, I would get actual beads and paint them. I just wasn't able to find any for cheap, so I just decided to do this instead. To make the 10-6 card, I just took a piece of thin card. Here I'm just using the packaging from an ibuprofen packet. And you're also going to need a fine liner pen or just any type of black pen, I guess. You could use felt it, biro, really doesn't matter. And draw your 106 in a similar font to that on the Mad Hatter's card. Honestly, I just freestyled this, just make it look a bit old fashioned. I then singe the edges of the card with a lighter and I just take the black pen and blacken some of the edges to make it look a bit more tattered. Um, I got the card a little bit wet so the ink smudged but honestly I think it just adds to the look. I didn't have any extra lace so I wasn't able to show you but I'm just going to insert this clip again because this is how I measured the lace to go over the hat. I just gathered everything and then cut a little bit extra than I needed to and then I took the hot glue gun and piece by piece glued down the lace with a piece of card to smooth everything down otherwise you'll burn yourself and um, you can paint this green like it is in the movie but I liked the way it looked white so I just left it like this. Now to make the bobbin sash, I guess you could call it, the belt made of thread that the Mad Hatter wears, 
you're going to need some rope or string I just use some string like this and you're going to need some colored thread I found a pack on eBay that was pretty cheap and it gave me a bunch of different colors and then you're going to want to measure out a piece of string that is double the size of your torso diagonally so take the piece of string measure it from your shoulder to your hip bone and then double that and that will be your sash essentially so to make the sash you first want to make a loop at the bottom just make a knot like this this is going to stop the thread from sliding out and also it's going to give you a loop for you to attach onto your costume so then you want to take the bobbin and take one piece of string and thread it through to your left and then the other piece of string to your right so they should come out of the bobbin at different directions and then you just pull like this and you carry on repeating this for all of the bobbins and then eventually you'll have a sash Once all of the threads are threaded onto the string, um, you just want to tie another knot to make a loop at the end, and then you can use both of the loops to hook on to your costume. And for the pieces of ribbon that come out of his pocket, it's really super simple. You just take pieces of ribbon and tie it to a safety pin. And then you just attach the safety pin to the pocket of your blazer. So for the outfit, I just worked with things I already had at home. So I paired a pattern top. This is a different one than the one I wore originally to Comic-Con and I don't think it was a good choice because it was too small and I put a lace dress I already owned on top of it I did buy a petticoat to put underneath to give it more volume and for the bow tie it's better to just watch what I'm doing because it's pretty self-explanatory
I also bought these lace cuffs to go underneath the Caesar Play blazer and this pin cushion ring that was similar to the ones he wore in all his pictures. Because I was wearing a dress I wore some bright red tights underneath that I already owned and some mismatched pattern socks and I just wore it with my Doc Martens but any type of black boot would work. So that's the finished look, I hope you enjoyed the video. The clown is there to give me modesty because the shirt was way too small. Um, but I'm going to be uploading a part 2 to this video on how I did the makeup so keep your eyes out for that. Follow my Instagram to see all of my cosplay pictures for the month of October and thank you for watching.